This is, no offense, eh? Brought to you by Matt Buchanan Studios with comedians Matt Buchanan and Jackie Graham. Be sure to visit our website at www.mattbuchananstudios.com and you can order my new book, An Explanation for Life, The Universe, The Brain, The Mind, and Consciousness. We mean you no offense, so please don't cry. We are comedians, so that's our alibi. So if you don't like us, please don't cancel the show. We're just having fun, so just let it go. Have you noticed on Disney Plus everything that they added? No, I am not a Disney Plus subscriber. Oh, well, I should sir. Be. Yeah, no, you honestly should be at this point because they cause they bought Fox, right? Oh, so that's a lot. now all like every season of Family Guy is on there. Ooh. Um, same with like American Dad. They freaking added Brickleberry, which oh, I yes. love. I've seen at least the first one or two seasons of it. I think it's only. Uh, or no, I think there's three seasons actually because they got canceled after the third season, I, I believe. I guess so. <laughs> but like, fuck, it's like one of my it's favorite shows. So, like, so incredible. It, yeah, it's right up there with, with like the Rick and Morty's and those like weird and like yeah. Mike Tyson's mysteries. Oh my Leonardo god, <laughs> so Just, like that weird late night, uh, uh, late late night TV. Yeah, but yeah, they have a bunch of um, like National Geographic. Yeah, I was just gonna ask. I feel like we gotta turn turn you down a little bit. Are you still here yourself, kid? Uh, yep. Nice. Okay. How <laughs> how, how we get in there? You're I was fine. just thinking that too. Yeah, it's because I got the expensive mic. Right. Yeah. No, I get it. A woman's voice can be hard to hear. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're upfront about it. Uh, yeah. Do you like one more notch? Yeah. Okay. You're. Uh, I'm not. You're here for the technical. For the record, again. Yeah. This, I'm not basing it off. My feelings, I'm no, just what it sounds like. No, I appreciate that. Okay. We're going for, uh, we want that high sound quality. Why don't we, um, for the audience here, I'm going to do a story right now, actually, because we're, uh, it's St. Patrick's Day. Oh, it's like. And, uh, yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day here for us. It's going to be the 24th of March for you guys, or later than that. But uh, here we are. We're, we're ripping, and I'm glad I just got to do something for St. Patty's Day. And uh, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Woo! Are you Irish? No, you remember we covered that, that one episode when we were talking about whether... Uh, oh, yeah, like you, you were asking if I was Irish because you saw these dang old magnets. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm Scottish and Dutch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what is that from Austin Powers where he's like, there's two things I can't stand, it's people that are intolerant of other people's cultures and the dutch <laughs> <laughs> such a fantastic line. Was a good line oh nice so yeah it is st patrick's day and yes. i forgot that like i was gonna actually like have something to do today so it's like nice to to actually be doing something yeah for sure i i don't know i feel like st patrick's seven. day yes yep but yeah, St. Patrick's Day hasn't really meant much for me since, like, university. It's true. Yeah, like, it's definitely been a declining holiday. Uh, yeah. But there are some memories. It used to be fucking lit, though. I, I didn't even realize it was coming around until, like, two days ago when I started seeing stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that's, like, yeah. It didn't even cross my mind, though. Yeah. It's a Wednesday, too. I mean, so. <laughs> it's not Wednesday, the optimal day. Uh, it's not the optimal day. Now, I wanted to actually, maybe I'll just start off with this because, uh, so last episode, we discussed uh, my new book, An Explanation for Life, okay. and then we also, uh, we showed you a little bit inside the book, and we, uh, there are going to be some more videos coming out about that soon that you can watch some little clips uh, to see some more insight into what's going on inside of the book. Uh, and inside your brain. 
and inside the brain because it is there's a lot of insights in here to your brain to your mind to consciousness and i guess i just wanted to take another minute to talk about it because last time i realized like i literally i went from this and i was so excited to to laugh about it that i went right to the south park segment oh. where we were looking at it and i was like i feel like that's not like totally the image of the book <laughs> it's not like the precise right. image but at the same time i was like it's definitely uh it was good good for the show and I just wanted to make a point that this is, you know, it's something I worked hard on. It's a real book. You it's know. a real book. It's a, <laughs> I hope an interesting one. There's and some smart things in there. It attempts to answer a lot of those tough questions about uh, life, things like consciousness and the brain and the universe and sort of how we got here, a bit of an evolutionary approach to that. Uh, my background is in neuroscience. Uh, my doctorate is in neuroscience, but I dabble a lot i really enjoy i hate that i said that i hate when people who say i dabble okay I dabble. I, i'm a dabbler what listen, i really i yeah. love that phrase <laughs> you do okay well i feel I less dabble. bad about it because I, I just uh, just as soon as i said it, i was like ah that sounds so but i, I just like i like uh, evolution science i like like dark matter physics i'm really into to physics stuff so we cover a bit of that in there and then if you do go to the website because it should be all up by the time this episode's up and last episode it's up now uh, you'll be able to see it on Amazon on our website? website. It's www.mapbuchanestudios.com. <laughs> and you might also see this out there. This is the pre-release for my board game. Uh, it's called 33 Degrees of Order and Chaos. It's a bit of a, it's a new game. And if you go on the website, you'll see it. It's available for pre-order, so it's not out yet. Uh, but these are the prototypes uh, that have been made. It's a fun game. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say game. about it tonight. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. It's a deep strategy game. Kind of, I mean, it's it's not like chess per se, but it's it takes on the essence of chess with the board type. And the fact that it starts every player on an equal playing ground, and there's a lot of deep strategy and a lot of deep moves. Yeah. That's nice. So, it's equal opportunity. Now that I got that out of the way. Uh, <laughs> I feel like you, again, really rushed through that. <laughs> like, I guess I did, didn't I? I just wanted to, like, bring it up and to show you because you might have, like, if you're watching these you're more and you're accomplished going to than the... Me. I don't have a game to show people. <laughs> <laughs> people are just happy to see you here. They're just happy that you're doing this for them. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, God. But it's, I figure if you're coming to the website, if you are tuning in and you are actually listening to, to these instructions that I'm giving <laughs> and saying, go to the website and check it out, then you will have seen these and you will have seen the board game. So I thought I would just like at least mention that it's a thing and, and that it is available for pre-order and it's going to be fun. I'm just really focused on getting the book out now before uh, I can deal with the last few things with the manufacturer for the board game. And <laughs> yeah fucking excited about that fuck yeah so order Books that board amazon whatever country you're in or on uh, right directly from our website and Yay. let's i'm gonna show you so this is an important follow-up from like two episodes ago maybe even three i realized we always have a couple things we need to follow up on and then i've let a few slip through the cracks oh do you gosh. remember when we watched that hamster video yes <gasps> but it like he got like halfway through his oh prison God, we escape. Have the rest of the we video? have the rest of the footage. <gasps> I'm so we excited. Have the rest of the okay, footage, thank everybody. God, because I yeah, I actually. Jackie was I dreaming about it one night. Account I couldn't for sleep. quite a few of our views because sometimes <laughs> I go back and I just rewatch. And I was watching that one actually recently, and I actually was thinking like, oh man, we actually never got to see the end of this. We did like, it exactly right there. We didn't finish it. Right. I'm so glad that we now get to know, and I really hope it's a happy ending. It's. We'll find out. It's an ending. Okay. It's an ending. This is for all those committed listeners who are coming back, uh, coming back to watch this. So I hope that you have been patiently. Uh, waiting, invigorating yourselves to hear yeah. what was going to happen with this. So apparently, we did not forget about you. Yeah, we came back, and this is all happens because then I'm like editing the episodes a week later, and I'm like, oh fuck, we. <laughs> I was like, shit, we didn't, we didn't even wrap that up, or I'll be like, two, this didn't happen, so we're coming back. I guess that helps the fact that I do the editing and that shit too. I, I know, I get it. it. You have editing skills. I don't <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here, here it is. <laughs> oh my you god, this one looks scary. Look yeah, this is um, the part two, I guess, of where we left off uh, last time. I think this was episode four or five that we watched this in, uh, and now this is episode seven. So you're gonna have to go back a couple. Here we go. We're uh, 
the hamster is trying to escape from the okay, prison. Okay, this looks like it's like obstacle course. Tough, like. Oh, it's just so fluffy oh, though. He's so fluffy, it barely nicks I him. I guess it looks like it's like. Oh, oh, okay, he's figured it out. <gasps> it's like this super awesome oh, retrofitted. Oh, little feet keep falling out of the little cage. tube. <laughs> retrofitted <gasps> to look like a prison. Wow, oh, they have like. Oh, there's mold. moving parts to yeah. this maze. I wonder, I wonder who's on the back end of this. Like, there's definitely like a guy in the back. There's like, yeah, <laughs> like waiting to slide these out. There's no way they have all the electric automated. Oh like, no. Well, some... like, I feel like did they add in the sound effect afterwards? Of they could have. Yeah. Or it yeah. Sounds what do like you metal? think? That's something you, they could just make that up. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like that. That's can't be real. <laughs> I watched a couple. <laughs> what? Shit's so small. Yeah, it's so yeah. small. It's not gonna be like wedging out like that. Uh. I actually watched a couple videos recently, but it was like uh, a new series from this guy, and he's got his little drum kit and different instruments set up right around him, and then he'll like play a clip from a movie, like I think the one I saw was Ratatouille, and then he like did all the sounds of like the chopping and that all on his drum set, and I guess that's oh. like how they maybe would do it in the studio kind of thing. Oh, that's and interesting. It was neat to kind of see that behind the scenes. All right, cool. so he's on his way. He's just still escaping. He's made it over. The, the first few obstacles through the blades, and let's see where he goes. I feel like somehow I just clued into that it says that he's escaping from prison. <laughs> you didn't see that. That's this the whole the whole gimmick. I wish we had a wide angle of this though. They really have a. They're using action shots. Like they're in yeah. there with a mobile <laughs> camera. I need oh, to no, see the wide he angle. Get over? <gasps> oh. No, you did not do that. Stop. Is there another one? There's one more. Oh, my God. We got the finish. He always wanted a little bit more. That's 57 oh seconds of prime hamster uh, prison escape content. You I was going to be so upset. There is a part two. Let's see what's about to happen. Okay. Here he is. He's yeah, on the final wheel. Yeah, this one looks tricky. They may have got him He's with this. He's on the wheel. Oh, but the wheel is secretly opening the gate. <gasps> Little did you realize. I don't know oh. why the video did end there, but that is where they ended it. There was no more parts to this series on this channel. Okay, but we but do we see know. that the door is open. He mm -hmm. is obviously going to escape. And the caption from, I suppose, the owner oh, yes. says, yes, it did it. The door was opened. So it did it. That bothered me too. <gasps> as soon as you said that, if this is your pet, you're not going to like... <sighs> What? Oh, I love that. <laughs> We're both just like, Immediately, excuse like, me, I feel more connected it. to your hamster than you do. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like, how do you, uh, maybe it's because they just don't know what it is, like, but at the same time. Oh, wait. How does. Because I don't really know how to, <laughs> but I think you just figure it out. I remember, well, in my case, when I had the last hamster I had, which was like a few years ago, actually, I had a hamster not that long ago. Um, my friend told me. Because, like, she knew how to tell. Uh, she does lots of animal stuff, like rescue okay. squirrels and takes care of baby squirrels. So like I guess hamsters falls into that rodent veterinarian level. Veterinarian or something? Uh, more like a, yeah, it's like a side hustle, <laughs> side gig. She does it all for free, though, so it's not like okay. a hustle. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> she, like, like, she, like, she takes care of squirrels and does, like, squirrel rescue and, like, exotic animals in Ottawa and stuff. What? And, yeah, That's it's so really cool. neat. So she always had cool pets. I mean, oh, she man. still does. A pet but, squirrel? Like, that would be fucking yeah. sick. And her boss and like they were like cool with her bringing them around and she would when she come over here would she would bring them over because when they're babies you can't leave them for that long so she would usually have like a toque and then there would be like three or four squirrels in there just like curled up together oh. and then you could just kind of take them out and when they're a certain age they're almost translucent and tiny but when they get to be like a few weeks they're like just small enough and hairy and furry oh. and so cute they don't do much they can barely see yeah. As we're describing it more, I'm starting to feel more like, okay, wait, this is starting to feel like it's actually a weird thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> it sounds cute, but it's like some they, shit yeah, because they with. don't come out fully like ready to rock. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're not Bambi out here. They're like freaking uh, what it, kangaroo babies, where they're kangaroo all, like, babies. Yeah, they have to gross. still like come and jump back in the. Jump back well, like, the whenever they start in the pouch, though, they're, like, super tiny, and they have, like, they're, like, skin-colored. Oh, yeah, like, they're extra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So the well, hamster this was made lovely. it. I'm so glad I'm really, that um, uh, I'm happy for him. I'm glad that we got to share that with you. He's falsely I, accused, I anyways. Share that with you, and then uh, I came across this, which just had me chuckling. So we've had in the past some videos of people who, who had a bit of you know, maybe not the best pronunciation, in okay. Diganu. Right, uh, right. You know, if we recall our and old friend in Diganu. Well, here's one that really just I thought this was pretty good. I believe uh, back to the Irish we're talking about. So in oh. lieu of uh, in lieu of in light of our <laughs> our day here, the march, we're gonna pretend he's Irish. He could be one of those ones that's like Irish. It's like Scottish <laughs> <laughs> or English, if you like. It depends kind of what kind of suburb Listen, you're from. Listen, I just wanted to be known that Matt said that you're like the Scottish. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> just in terms of accent. Now nah, you can usually oh. tell the difference, I suppose, if you got a good enough ear for it. I have a poor ear for those. All right. All right, here we go. What, Chris, why are you laughing? I need oh to turn this God. up. Oh, it's at literally at 100. Why does this... Oh, no. That's my other volume's at 100. Sneaky, sneaky. I feel like that's going to be really loud. Probably. I hope so. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I had to raise all the clips in the last one. Oh, okay. So, let's go loud. Oh, actually, this is what else I can do, too. Uh, just like move my mic a little bit closer. Oh. Let's see how that goes. What, Chris? Why are you laughing for? Why are you laughing for? I'm being serious. I'm being serious. <laughs> no, you see, now you see, I'm talking facts. Yeah, I don't do if buts and maybes. I do absolutes. Do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> okay, that's definitely fucking Scottish. That's like, Scottish. Oh, for fucking sure. That's definitely Scottish. You think? Good I think old so. British memes, though. <gasps> it says, but maybe British. they don't know. It could be a, like a real deep Brit. Okay, wait. Is know. Great Britain? Yeah, they wouldn't be happy about this either. So Great Great Britain is UK, but UK also includes Scotland technically. Oh, okay, in terms okay. Of, yeah, so you've got right. and so England I, and Scotland. I'm still most likely. I I would put yeah. money on that. And being And Northern Scottish. Ireland, I think, is part of the UK as well. Oh, I but then know. the other part of Ireland is separate. So they had like a whole separatist thing. There's actually still like a real jive there, apparently. A lot of potatoes too. It's <laughs> <laughs> the important thing to remember. Uh, the valleys of Ireland. So let's just hear that one more time. Yeah, can that anybody, was honestly Can fantastic. anybody guess what he's... Because I guess I'll read it out to the listeners. Like, hope, maybe you can guess what he's actually saying, but, like... Yeah, no, the subtitles were definitely... Yeah, it uh, helped for us if, absolutely. if you're watching. Absolutely. What, Chris, why are you laughing for? Why are you laughing for? I'm being serious. I'm being serious. <laughs> no, you see, no, you see, I'm talking facts here. I don't do if, buts, and maybes. I do absolutes. Do you know what I'm trying to say? That's my favorite. That's my favorite. I do I don't, absolutes. I don't do if ands or buts. I do absolutes, man. Chris, what you laughing for? I'm talking oh. facts. So oh, that's it. the first thing he says is Chris. Definitely does not. So sound wait, like I don't Chris. know. Maybe he's British. Like I don't know. See, that's what I'm saying. Like I, I don't, don't know, know enough. Like y'all sound the same. Not to mention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not to mention, there's so many. Like it, you could be in one village or another village an hour apart, and then you're gonna right. sound different too. It's like how do you really? I'm not good. Like they might be better over there if they hear it more often, but true. I don't. Know. I am a. I those are probably three of my favorite accents, though: the Irish accent, the Scottish oh, accent, yeah. and the British accent. Like Absolutely. I love them. It just sounds like I'm loving listening to Me this. Me too. Like, <laughs> I gotta I don't hear care what more, you're saying. <laughs> one more time, and I'll try to like say it with them. Chris, I guess. what you laughing? What, for? Chris, what are you laughing for? What are you laughing? I'm, laughing for? I'm being serious. Laughing I'm being serious. <laughs> no, you see, no, you see, I'm talking. No, you see, I'm talking. Yeah, I don't do if buts and maybes. I do absolutes. Do you know what I'm trying to say? <gasps> this kid, like you know, what I'm trying to say. I feel like he's got some fucking balls. Like he's just the way he's it, talking yeah. is so like. What do you think he's talking about? Even yeah, this is a oh, ten second clip. We have no context. These fucking lads that what when he, he says something he means but it. He doesn't do ifs, buts, and maybe. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> and like if you're gonna step to him, you better be fucking ready. <laughs> and there might be no maybes. I'm talking facts. Yeah. The one thing we do know is that is that he's not happy with Chris right now. I don't right. know who's who. Chris. This is Chris. Chris I'm seems like a jovial Chris. fellow. He's laughing, Chris. <laughs> Apparently, he's laughing. <laughs> uh, if we, if you had to weigh in, what for Dodge? What do you think? Is he uh, Irish, Scottish, or uh, British? Uh, accent. The accent, just based on his accent, what do you think? I'm going with. British. You're going you with British? British. I was like, gonna go with Scottish. You convinced me before, I think, but. It's British or Scottish, I think. It probably definitely yeah. is an Irish. So, to be fair, when I 
opened this segment saying that <laughs> this was a uh, St. Patrick's Day. I haven't forgot. I probably prepped this clip ten days ago, <laughs> so I don't remember if it was going to be Irish or not. But what, you uh, think British? Like, um, like super backwater. British. Backwater yeah. British. What is it like Cockney? It does Cockney. Yeah. It does Cockney. kind of have like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's something about the tone is totally Scottish. Like it's like because it's mm-hmm. not quite British. It's like. Mm-hmm. It's very like. <laughs> Fucking, I don't even, I can't do Scottish, but it's incredible. I can't either. Yeah, I wish I could do, like, any accents. Scottish. Inflection. Yeah, I know. (laughs) That was a little bit Irish, though, too, actually. I know. But you've got some Irish in you, right, or no? No, Uh, Yes. Yes? Or no, sorry, wait. Well, yeah, I think a little bit. I'm, like, basically English, Irish, and Scottish. Hmm. Like, as white as a person could possibly be, basically. <laughs> it's like, All of the Nixons. Uh, yeah. Of that general area. Of the <laughs> 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 it's the product of squirrel butt fucking. And a little bit of Genghis Khan. And the Genghis, yeah, the... Uh, oh, I, who's... Um, he's a British comic, and he's got this great bit... It's so funny. It's one of my, like, I really like it. Oh, what is his name? He's like a newer, younger comic. Also super white, like practically albino, like white. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the joke's about how, like, the Brits, obviously now that after all these years and we've realized, uh, you know, that that this stuff was was stolen, that it was taken, that it was, you know, your people's stuff. And and then the Brits are just like, uh, you know, they're like the other countries come back like india and france and they're like well do you like do you think we could we could have it back now and you know if it's just sitting in your museums and then the brits are just like we're not done looking at it <laughs> <laughs> like, i feel i it's need incredible. to give credit to whoever that was because it's a funny bit and it's not my bit but what was his uh i gotta look it up any ideas it's a british young british yeah he's really popular now i re- like i've watched a bunch of his stuff uh, let's see, young, I'm literally going to search that, young British comedian, uh, history joke, will that come up? Maybe if I spelt it right. Yep, there we go, James Ackister. Oh! Yeah, really okay. funny guy, James Ackister. He's doing, he does a lot of British, like, TV type talk show game shows as well, but he also has some wicked funny stand-up sets. Okay, Love right him. on. James Ackister. And that whole segment is funny. Like, that segment to me is like the British equivalent to uh, uh, Jim Jeffries' Australian gun joke. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, that to me is kind of how that that plays out for me. Now, uh, right we've been getting, actually, some a lot of traction. A lot of listeners are, are coming back. They're saying, Jackie didn't tell us enough about her experience on Netflix. Oh, and are they? <laughs> like, we want to know. We want to know more. I want to know more too. Like I feel like I know some, but I feel like there's must be more to know. Like how did it all? How did that play out for you? I'm sure you had like some audition, and you had, uh, you know, you had to to do the bits and do the recording. And where I think it was in Toronto, was it? And like so, what was yes. it? Yes. Yeah. So I have had an acting agent since I was like 12. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Was and that so? I, this uh, was your first or not first gig? So, so no, well, I mean, okay, I did some like and... Canadian-made for TV movies. <laughs> That's sick. no way. I'm definitely gonna have to um, look at those. But yeah, Hemlock Grove was, and it's so funny. I actually auditioned for the movie Three Hundred. What? Yeah, I have like the original script. I love from that 300. movie. I bet you do. Everyone That's loves really that movie. cool. <laughs> you got the original script. I remember I went there with like friends for a birthday party. It was like my birthday party, maybe whatever. I was like 12, 13, whenever it came out. And yeah. so that was like, oh, let's all go to the movies. That was a big thing to do. And I remember I had to leave uh, the movie for like five minutes because I was like kept coughing. I, maybe it was like a kernel in my throat. I okay. still remember to this day because I was so embarrassed because oh I wouldn't God. stop coughing. I have a very similar memory <laughs> of another movie that. I had was the there same a little loser happened. kid coffin and you were no, like, hey, no, 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 I was the loser kid that oh. I, it still burned in my brain of how humiliating that was of no. having to like walk out of the theater, like, cause I couldn't Fucking keep relatable. it together. Yeah. Like having to scooch by everybody coughing, ups- like yeah. uh, interrupting this, this fantastic movie score and then going out and like, yeah, getting a beverage <laughs> or something so I could fucking. Yeah. Or just be able to like 
cough more openly to like get whatever the fuck it is out. Yeah, just exactly because you want to just fucking hawk it. And these days, you would literally. I was literally just thinking, I'm like, oh, that oh was fucking God. pre-COVID too. Way pre-COVID. Yeah, you can't be out there. Maybe that was patient zero. <laughs> Even if I'm out with a mask anytime these days, yeah, I just, I feel very insecure about coughing oh, or absolutely. making any, yeah, anything that's like <sighs> sneezing, any of that shit. It's just like, well, oh, Well, and like, man. I'm a smoker too. And like, for anybody else who smokes it's of any natural. kind, mm -hmm. it's like you sometimes get random, a random fucking cough. It's and then it's exactly. like, I feel like I almost want to tell people, I'm like, oh, I swear I'm not sick. And then you just confessing just... to everybody you meet that you're a smoker. I'm yeah. a smoker. I'm a smoker. I'm a smoker. Like, I'm a... But it's then not you get like everybody with allergies. It's fine. Like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, just uh, the, the cants, the big C. You got to assume at least like half the people have either smoking or allergies or something, right? That's going to make you have some kind of. So, I mean, I guess it's, you know, with the mask and, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so you were, you auditioned for 100. You had the script that, like, that's very cool. What was your, what <laughs> yeah. were you going to audition? What was your role? In or, 300? Uh, yeah, what was the potential? Uh, so they ended up actually casting a little boy to do it. But I just remember it was, like, a scene where I would be running out of a burning village or something. And then I'd, like, say something to um, whoever the like the oracle or the king or something like the guy who's the mate russell crowe is russell crowe yeah right Wasn't yeah and he would like or no or who is it who's in that it's movie? the one that's not russell crowe the one that's like uh i forget the guy that's horrible okay google anyways who's in 300 the main actor Gerard butler <laughs> oh that's it the other russell crowe she took so long <laughs> Right, yeah. So it's so funny because whenever you get a script for an audition, like you never know how big the right, production is gonna be. No, yeah. So you didn't know, like, I guess this was, yeah. You would know how big that this movie was gonna become. Yeah, no, it was and wild. And also, you're like a kid, so you wouldn't know anything about that, anyways. <laughs> like, why would you know how big a movie would be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there was that, um, and then. So for Hemlock was Grove. Was that in Toronto or how did that, like, where no, was No, so that one was in film? Montreal. So in basically Montreal. I would go, like, I was going on the uh, Via trains by myself Whoa. at, like, 14 going okay. to, like, Montreal and Toronto for the auditions. 90s, everybody. No, I guess that would have been early 2000s. Well, yeah, Thanks and it wasn't until, I mean, I don't know, and it was always to, like, because my mom would go with me when she could, but if it was a situation where she wasn't able to go with me, then yeah. I would literally just, you know, go on the train and then from the train station, take a taxi. Or, like, if it was close by, I would walk to the location of where the audition mm. was. And now thinking back on it, I'm like, it? yeah, this was pretty trusting. That's resilient. <laughs> yeah, very, I mean, that is kind of how it was, though. I remember by that age, like, by the time we were, like, a teenager, I was a teenager. And, you know, stories from my parents, like, you'd be allowed to, you know, make those ventures on your own. Yeah. You get on here, or even like planes, you get on this plane, okay, you get off there, you're with your brother, you meet this person there, and your grandma's going to pick you up, or whatever the fuck. Like. <laughs> yeah, and Montreal wasn't actually too bad, because, I mean, there was still a lot of English, for the most part. That's true. And you were, co like, commuting from Ottawa, probably, at that point, so it was like Ottawa to Montreal, or like... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I would just, like, yeah, take, like, a cab, or mm -hmm. whatever, to the audition, and then immediately just go back to the train station mm -hmm. and then so that would have been a back. young one for you then eh? yeah, i guess when you were yeah. quite younger and but then, i mean like, i didn't Hemlock go to that Grove one alone like five years ago or something eh, or something so i was 19 okay. i believe or 20 when i did hemlock grove but the character i was playing so hilarious so like i just look like i am 12 years old <laughs> and always have so um sometimes i like to cast people that are older to play younger parts also because it's kind of fucking gross they but, sexualize them and shit well yeah, so whenever I got the audition, it was to play the, like, 16-year-old hot cheerleader that gets, like, murdered, basically. Yeah. And, um... Don't sound so, uh, like you're disagreeing with it so much. Listen. <laughs> like, you're, like, already, like, they they poorly casted me. You'll they, see! Even though it's, like, a whole team of professionals, why? and I got casted, and I was in the movie, it's like, ah, I think they did a bad actually, decision. <laughs> my audition on. for you that was actually so fucking sick. So, like, you get a script, right? And you prepare it however you would 
like how you think it should be done and then okay. when you get there you'll do it and can i do that yep. i think it's fine but either they uh tell you like how they want like we'll give you direction of if they want you to like change anything or like do it gotcha. in a certain way so how long would you maybe have to like prepare because it's like maybe you're like how how long would like an audition prepared be like if you're did they tell you you want to do this part or your whole part? You got to do the whole thing, or like... they don't give you the entire script for the yeah. movie. It's that you get it's like, like a scene. Okay, they so it's always a scene. Okay, or like a couple of scenes yeah. depending on how big the role is. Mm -hmm. But for this one, it was just like one scene, and uh, um, so I like did it how I had prepared it, and then they were like, "Okay, for this next take, we want you to do it as if you're being eaten alive, starting at the feet." <laughs> Cool. And like that was the coolest <laughs> fucking audition. Oh my god! And I killed him because like were, yeah, you I'm meant to be a fucking scream mm -hmm. queen. Like I, Obviously you killed her, yeah. yeah, like it was so fucking good. That's amazing. I want to start like every conversation every time. I that's how I want to meet start conversations when I meet people now. Hey, I'm, I'm Matt Buchanan. I'd like to, just to like set the premise here, I'd just like, you know, let's just pretend that we're yeah, being eaten from the, the feet down, or feet up. The uh, feet down? By a monster. <laughs> uh, feet down, yeah. It's just going to chomp through the ground. Uh, nothing's actually going to happen. Yeah, I feel like you're going to make a lot of connections this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so. And go. Uh, roll. Um, why? I Okay, so I got the audition. Sorry. I got the part after audition. And I had filmed a couple. So my character was in like five out of the twelve episodes. Okay. Um. And after this I this is had episode like, seven, by the way. So fucking surpassed you guys. I'm luck. Sorry. <laughs> out here performing. Yeah. <laughs> five bigs. Anyway. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so after I had done like I think the first episode, the uh director or whatever asked if I would come back and audition again for a second part to play. So my character, the hot girl, was Lisa. Okay. So they wanted me to audition to play Lisa's younger sister. So Lisa, the character, was 16. To play both of them? Or they were going to yes. swap you out? Or... No, no. To play both. Curious? Right. So... <laughs> Seems like there's a lot of people out there. I mean... Well, like, because also Lisa's yeah, sister only had one person. scene in one episode. Okay. So, so it, was like a it was like, well, I mean, I guess, thing. like, I don't know. But maybe yeah. else it's kind of fucking good. Suck my dick. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, so the character description for Lisa's sister was the fat, uglier, younger <laughs> sister of Lisa. Wow. Just and I'm like deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> so they, you're doing both ends. Well, okay i don't really know how to feel and i was like oh i guess they'll probably like maybe they'll change my appearance a lot all they literally did was put a brown wig on me hmm. put zero makeup on me like not even like just regular kind of like stage makeup <laughs> just nothing so they i was just so shiny yeah and then put me in just like corduroy pants and like this kind <laughs> oh. of sweater realistically like and I'm like, okay, cool. So it's just like me naturally is what you're saying. That's what the, the fuck? <laughs> you're a perfect cast for right? that. Right? I'm like, okay, so. I but they like also have. It so keeps my self esteem in check because I'm like, I don't know how to feel. Oh, wow. But yeah, I played both parts. So you oh, yeah. Fucking range. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Multiple roles in the same movie. That's cool. Does that happen often, I wonder? People really would do that. I don't know. Just like, yeah, could you just like don't shower tonight and you know just don't put makeup on this morning? Yeah, and, no, they're like, uh, yeah. we got this. What was the? How did recording like that go? So you do five episodes. Was this all? It's. I have no idea like how that kind of functions. Is that back to back? Like you're doing it in like a week or is it over months? No, yeah. So like... I started filming in like August, mm -hmm. and I think the last episode that I did was in. December, but then I actually had to go back in like January to do more like um, audio recording for like voiceover okay, because just... like sometimes they would do that if they'll like add a line in that like it looks like the character could have said even like if their backs to the camera gotcha. or something you know and like... you can just do that voice no that makes right. sense they need you it's, I feel like they do a lot of that remote these days now but. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so I literally would just go to Toronto for like a couple days at a time, basically. Like, mm -hmm. 
film. Probably like once a month kind of thing. Hotel it or something and you just stay there. Uh, I would usually actually stay with my sister because oh, uh, nice. she was living in Toronto at the time. Handy. Oh my god, there was actually one day that was like, it was, Hemlock Grove was super legit because like there were some days where like I had a driver that like. They'd like send a yeah. ride for you or something. And yeah. And it, like nice. the dude with like the sign basically. You remember the chick from the last episode talking about the uh, Asian or like if white people act like Asian? She's like, like legit. Oh. This place is, <laughs> there's so many white people here. This place is legit. I'm being respectful <laughs> by ordering pancakes. Pancakes. <laughs> yeah. Pancakes. <laughs> yeah. I have to eat this with my hands? Like... <laughs> so fantastic. Uh, okay, so that uh, that's great. And yeah. Hemlock Grove. So yeah, that was I maybe still is on Netflix. That was uh, it is Jackie's Netflix experience, and you know it was super fun. I'm sure you'll be back soon. I clearly have not been. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got like too close to like you know my dreams potentially being a reality so i just immediately took myself out of it <laughs> like, self sabotage nope. <laughs> life that's not good yeah uh, you gotta just keep on pushing but uh wait can i open this now yep yeah we're good do we want to go into my show and tell uh yeah let us huh. let us actually right. excuse me I was just going to say, why don't I just, uh, just what like, Chris, as a buff. Why are you laughing for? Why are you laughing for? I'm being serious. I'm being I'm serious. Being serious. No, you see, no, you see, I'm talking facts here. I don't do if, buts, and maybe. I don't do if, absolute. buts, and maybe. You, know you know what, yeah. Jackie? You want to go into your segment? You're damn right. I don't know if but some maybes, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, what I you know, laughing for? I'm being serious. I'm being serious. serious. Next time you oh, laugh okay. at one of my jokes. I'm being serious. <laughs> I feel Look like at that's... his face. He's yeah, very serious. Very incredible. That is the honestly. face of a serious... Uh... <laughs> Aww. Jesus. Uh, serious guy. Look at that haircut. <laughs> Fantastic. How old is this kid? 15, 16? Honestly, it's hard. There's no way to tell. Yeah, there is no way to tell. <laughs> Adorable. I'm being serious. All right. If I'm putting my money back fucked on Scottish. Fucked up show and tell with Jackie. It's a fucked Woo. up show and tell with Jackie. All right. Show and tell. Do I wait for you tell. or do I uh, okay. do I pop so, the first one up? Well, not quite yet. Um, All right. So this week for the fucked up show and tell, um, I'm going to be showing hilarious infomercial products. Mm, nice. Yes. Uh. So, if anybody, uh, for everyone else who stays up till 4 a.m., do people still, are infomercials still real? I haven't had television in so long. Uh, I believe that they are, yeah. Like real television. Yeah. Um, nice. And I am the worst type of person, and, like, infomercials totally fucking get me. Like, even just when I was sort of doing a little bit of research for this segment, I started being <laughs> like, whoa. Jackie brought live product uh, displays here that she's purchased <laughs> like, herself. She... I have a Snuggie. It's fucking incredible. <laughs> like... That is a great purchase, actually, the Snuggie. Yeah, uh, but I feel like, well, these ones are not, but yeah, I mean, honestly, some up. of them I would kind of consider, but. Um... Yeah, Jackie actually has them all. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's all right. I had to try them out. <laughs> uh, this first one here is called the Better Marriage Blanket. And this is a it's advertised as a odor eliminating blanket made with the same material that the military uses to protect themselves against chemical weapons. <laughs> like mildew and chemical protecting blankets. Oh, so if you're getting bombed with like a smoke gas, you're going to throw this blanket over yourself See, to protect yourself and basically like prevent you the Dutch oven. <laughs> okay, well, yes, that's exactly it. So um, it, it quickly absorbs the odor of flatulence. That is oh, just <laughs> inevitable in a marriage. And you know if it works in military grade that this is a serious capturing device. But I suppose it must also work in the reverse. Because then what if you do put them in a Dutch oven? Then that shit stank is not getting out at all. You have no Well, no, because it filtration. sucks it into the blanket, though. So oh, it's supposed to take the odor away. Itself. Yeah. But then... So it's basically, it saves your marriage because you're not fucking want to kill your partner because they're shitting in your bed. <laughs> like, <laughs> but then you end up with, uh, how often you get to clean that thing? I don't really know where the odor goes. <laughs> smoke because it literally know, just like, holds on to all the farts forever. <laughs> like, <laughs> like farts are literally like little shit you particles. You cut it open and like... <laughs> 
Oh my god. That military grade. Uh, seriously, that would actually be a weapon. <laughs> unless it's like chemically, like you said, like chemically treated. And it's only twenty nine ninety five plus shipping yes. and handling. And you can save your marriage. That's a lot cheaper than a counselor. I mean, yeah, honestly. If the root of your problems, though, is your anus, then <laughs> <laughs> there might be some other It's issues. just not helping. <laughs> <laughs> So, are we able to show the YouTube? There clips? are, I believe. Let me pull up. Um, here are the links. Aha. Uh -huh. And I tried to pick short ones. So, yeah, they're only like a minute. Okay, yeah, we might not watch it all, but this looks highly entertaining. I'm already into it. Yes, and, I've and these are the real infomercials. Half these second. aren't made up. So, this was on television. Two and a half million views for it, practically. Uh, oh, wow, this is great. Okay, so we got... Are you going to need to... Oh, it's a, yeah, turn it up. Yeah, make sure the volume's up. I think I already got it oh, up right. pretty high. Let's see. All right. Problem in the marriage bed that no one likes to talk that's about. pretty quiet. Maybe that's why they call it silent but deadly. Well, now there's a real solution to a very real problem. Introducing the Better Marriage Blanket. On the a very outside, real the Better problem. Marriage Blanket looks and feels just like a soft, warm comforter. But on the inside, it contains a layer of activated carbon fabric. Activating the same carbon type of fabric, fabric used by the military to protect against chemical weapons. Molecules <laughs> <laughs> easily right? pass through the cotton shell and are harmlessly absorbed into the layer of carbon fabric. Even when used on top of bed sheets, offending molecules are absorbed before anyone knows they're there. So whether you <laughs> or your spouse suffers from offending particles or what offending molecules yeah like this is gonna deter and i mean hey it doubles oh as you may a, need to move that back over eh? your oh, my mic your mic <laughs> oh yeah i guess i will want to move my mic i was like two things were happening at once my brain just short-circuited i ran I saw out of that. I'm like, what just happened? I was like wait uh so yes but honestly i don't know like i was starting to get kind of sold like what are what's happening now i'm just gonna search something real quick are you about to like? Oh. What? I was like, are you gonna search another one? No. No. Uh, okay. I'm not gonna search it right now. I was just gonna tell because it made me think of this joke. Um. Uh, by Jim Wayne when he's talking about he's like because that would blanket would be perfect for people who like fall into that scenario with his his uh his joke that he says something about. He's a Scottish comedian. I love him. I brought oh, him up okay. on a previous episode, too. His name's Jim Wayne. We're doing Wayne. a lot of shout-outs to Jim Scotland Wayne. in this. I, like, the Scottish are strong. St. Patrick's Day episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting a civil... We're bad at geography. ...international war here. Yeah. He, he says something. He's like, you know when you're sleeping naked? And he's like, but you, you get a bit of a... You get an itchy ass. He's like, and you get an itchy ass, but you're sleeping naked, so, so you don't want to itch it. And so you're just hoping you can roll it over and maybe snag it on a bit of blanket. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of blanket. <laughs> and it's like, so if you got this blanket, it looks like you just got the shit blanket for all. <laughs> okay. Do you want to next one? <laughs> yes. So the next one we have here <laughs> are what? sauna pants. Is this a sex thing? <laughs> no. No? Who Why? Wants sweaty balls? Okay, so or sweaty any fucking genitals. This one I was very confused by, honestly. Um, so basically, sauna pants. That's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. It's a little <laughs> a wearable sauna for just your crotch. And it looks like it has like an electronic heat device that actually makes. Yeah, it like hot. it heats up, and like it's like a full blown little mini sauna. But apparently, it's supposed to be for like weight loss. Sorry, I was just turning down the TV volume. I was getting feedback on it. So what, weight loss on what, your thighs? <laughs> to just, like, really work down those thighs? Yeah. Um, I feel the like waist. the um, the, info, the actual clip of it uh, mm -hmm. explains it a little bit better, but it's mostly just hilarious. Like, All right, let's see what they actually want to do with so this So sweaty thing. balls. If you just want to get sweaty balls. It's like that one UFC fighter who was, like, uh, he took his pants off right after the fight, and then Joe Rogan goes up to me. He's like, uh, "What's up, man? Uh, just wondering why you took your pants off." He's like, "My balls was hot." <laughs> <laughs> Jesus and he had just Christ! These tights on. Nothing makes you feel more invigorated and refreshed than a steaming sauna, relieving your body of excess stored water, which may contain toxins. But who has the time to spend in a spa? Plus, the sauna experience can be expensive. Not anymore. Introducing the revolutionary <laughs> sauna pants. The sauna 
home sauna experience that you can enjoy when you want to and where you want to. Right in the comfort of your own home. All you do is sauna wrap. experience. Yeah, it's like, who's really dying for, for your that? dick? <laughs> Who really, really, really needs that? And why is it just the little shorts? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you mean the bodysuit? Isn't that bad for you? Probably, yeah. Like, I, I think would you're think it's... superheating your nuts. It can't be great for you. Yeah, wait, hang on. <laughs> that can't be that good Maybe for this you is actually a conspiracy that they're trying to bring down the birth rate. It's a fertilization like, yeah. technique. Yeah, we're going to pump these ads up Population as control. as possible. Uh, the sauna pants. So give me the whole Adjust thing, you know. Level and relax as the sauna pants I like sauning, but I couldn't imagine that. your body of excess water. You instantly feel invigorated. With Where does all the sweat See? go? It just seeps into your couch? Like <laughs> Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> it's not like it's going to retain it. Like, I sweat a lot. I'm telling you, I take that thing off. I better be standing in the tub. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's so graphic. <laughs> Incredible. Um, I, I, all I, oh my god. Like, I'm also just imagining it for myself as well. I didn't consider this, and I'm like, oh god, like, he's so slippery, and like, yeah, where the fuck is it supposed to go? This is nasty. I would need like one of those things they give you at the dentist. Is like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> they suck out all this. Just gonna slip one of those up there with my sauna thing, so I can just see. Be, I initially uh, thought this was like weight loss related, but it seems like it's just about relieving toxins from your body. Yeah, that's a whole other like. Just go to the sauna. Go to a get a spa membership. Just or stand in your fucking you know? bathroom with the shower on hot. There <laughs> <Yeah>. you go. <laughs> Steam it, yo. You've created a sauna. Uh, I, they do sell, like, individual saunas, though. I've looked at actually buying one of those, but I was like, nah, it's kind of not worth it, and I don't have room for it anyways, and I'd rather just have a real one. But it's like, it's, it's more like, like a tent type thing, almost, that you can just, like, sit around, and you can, it can fit in, like, a four by four thing, and you put, like, a chair in it, and then okay. you just, like, deep saunas you or something, it's real, it gets real hot, and it's supposed to treat like a steam sauna. Oh, that's cool. I have looked at them in the past, actually, because I thought maybe... So this maybe... might be the product for you, is what you're saying. <laughs> this See? plus, like, a way bigger It doesn't bigger cost an arm it. and a leg. It's only twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> this one, too, is only 20 Man, so you're telling me we could have all these products for less than $60? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I should have actually gone all out and purchased these products, because that would have made this so much And the much thing better. is, if you would have called right then, you probably would have got two of them. For half the price. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I love those. <laughs> you would have actually got two sauna pants for only fifteen ninety nine, <laughs> and then we would all be wearing sauna pants. Yeah, Although, we're going to throw in sauna toques for you. <laughs> I'm a pretty sizable guy, though. I might as well just wrap a tarp around my waist. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking pump heat into it. Yeah, we should probably do an ad in the future where it's just, like, us wearing sauna pants. <laughs> <laughs> We could do like we could recreate like that music video that Blink One Eighty Two did, where they're like running down the street naked, but we're just like running down with sauna pants, on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh God! What incredible. song was that? Do you remember? Um, is that the twenty three or? Uh, what's my age before? again? What's, maybe yeah. is it? Was it that one? I don't know. I honestly. feel like I want to search it, but also we probably can't play it because YouTube anyway. So I'm not gonna do that. Just go search it. Think about it. You're probably playing it in your memory anyways. At least anyone who knows what video I'm talking about. All right. Okay. What's All this right. one? So this next one here is the perfect fit button. Sounds like something I could use. <laughs> so basically, when you're a fat fuck, but you're also. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> um, I have I have a whole drawer of these. I put these on all my pants. Stop. All all pairs of pants that I own <laughs> have these on them. <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> Even my shorts. Okay, you know what? I take it back. You also <laughs> can stand use Stand by it. No no. Stand by. You can also so. use these though to tighten your pants. So if you're also yeah, that's something losing I'll never need weight. to do. <laughs> <laughs> I've just but stopped wearing belts. To buy pants. I've stopped wearing belts. You think I need to fucking tighten <laughs> my pants? <laughs> my oh, my God. my weight holds my pants up. Yeah. Well, these. I mean, I could totally see honestly a use for this too because sometimes, depending on what day you're wearing the jeans, they can feel super fucking tight. So. Mm. 
you, if it's like fresh after laundry day, they've right? just been in the dryer. You got exactly. yourself a top pair of jeans. Yeah. <laughs> Very toy. Um, so what is so like even a happening? Button. It's like they've got it. They put an extended button on it, basically. Is that yeah? So you literally just buy the button, and it's like a little like it's like. Yeah, what do I mean? They're on all my pants. Obviously, I know what these are. <laughs> I know. What it's like a little thumbtack, basically, that you push into. It's like an earring, almost. I'm going to let you know a secret here. My buttons are drawstrings. Removable? <laughs> no, they're just drawstrings. <laughs> I need flexibility. Oh, I understand. I don't think I've worn pants with buttons uh, in months. I love they like, give you all the colors, too. Absolutely. You can wear you for your khakis. You match them with all your shit. Yeah, khakis. Yeah. So, yeah, this... Uh, nifty product allows you to not have to uh, buy as many new I've jeans on depending TV. on whatever size you are you can adjust by just adding in a new button <laughs> yeah oh now are we gonna watch the video for this one I'm there s- is a video for this is? one I'm, I'm scared it's just gonna be like a video of me that's gonna be filmed <laughs> through my window <laughs> like my bedroom window trying to put these pants on i'm yeah. like oh man they just won't go on has this ever happened to you i wish i had a extra button <laughs> yeah. and then i would fucking put them on and uh i would like we all would feel good about myself and stuff okay we can but also then, recreate but then i would ads. try to put try to put my shirt on after and then it wouldn't fit <laughs> i'd be like oh no <laughs> <laughs> you should have tried the sauna pants yeah all right then i would need a sonic gut a gut sauna because that's really what the it's a combination between a sauna the, shirt it's on a shirt, yeah. It, was, it makes more sense. Probably a little more uh, appealing ad than the guts on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, what is it? Alli- wait, alliteration? Is that where? I'd alliteration, yeah. The sounds yeah. sound good together? Yeah, exactly. The, lots of words one by one. Yeah. Uh, so, so should we watch you, this ad? Yeah, or? I'm sure you're uh, particularly curious. Opa, opa, yo, that is the song of the day. <laughs> uh oh, are those? Pants oh, he's. Pants? Why did the video just start oh, with uh oh? Uh oh. First off, do you remember uh oh the show and they dump goo on you? Yes. And stuff? Now that you're saying this, I'm like, oh my god, that just unlocked a memory. Dropping the goo. That's the main thing I remember. Like, wasn't he called like the Punisher or something? Oh or, my god. The Punisher, and then it would be all the kids on like YTV. Yes. And then they would like play these random ridiculous games, but it was kind of like trivia, and you play at home, and then you would get sent into the goo. Yes. Nuts. Oh my god. Unreal. Incredible throwback. All right. So. Worth the interruption for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. You know, pop, stop. You need the perfect. Okay, this this is also worth the interruption because another memory that just popped into my head. This is a real story. I mean, oh, no. I just seeing this guy with his shit squeezed together. You just me. seen this guy? No, I, I said just seeing this guy. Oh, sorry. Just seeing this guy okay. there with his shit squeezed in trying to get it in did remind me that I remember with my brother and my father one day, must have it was young enough that we would have went into a... Trying to squeeze uh, something in? <laughs> like is this about to be a sad story <laughs> well we were in a change room together in a department store we need to call someone and, after. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> maybe i should just leave it on a cliffhanger because <laughs> <laughs> your ending might be more wild than what's about <laughs> all literally all that happened though we were in the the change room and i remember trying on these pants and legit i legit <laughs> i fucking Button them off? Yeah. I button them off? Oh my god. Why I did swear you to become god, a whole new person? I swear to god, the fucking button flew off. No. <laughs> I tried to button them up after like sucking in, release yeah. the butt, bang, button flew off, hang the pants back on the rack, bang. Out oh my there. god, Fuck I it. definitely have done that before too because I don't know why as a child or a young adult, it's like when you're in the change room with pants or whatever that are too small, I weirdly feel obligated to get into them because I, 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 I don't know do this. right it's like i want to ask for a bigger size like i guess i'll just fucking start i, yo, I remember doing okay, just, <laughs> <laughs> remember doing that though like literally there would be like a lady there you'd be like, yes excuse me <laughs> i get a xl can i get xl give me a 38 38 long 38 <laughs> long six 36 wide 
You're like auctioneering out to the. You're just yell. There's like 14 stalls of people. There's like a lot of change rooms, and you're just yelling from one. You're like putting your hand over it, or you're like throwing clothes <laughs> over the. Hand. <laughs> yeah. 36 long. 38 wide. XL. Can I try one in the blue? <laughs> you know this one. I like this one, but I want the red. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They're been, uh, really and they're always, like, up for it, too. They're like, can I find one for you? Do you want me to find one for you? <laughs> yeah. Can I get you a bigger size? Can I get you a smaller size? Always yeah. a bigger size. <laughs> I'm always underestimating every time. Never have I, like, oh, can I get a smaller size? Never happened. <laughs> yeah, it's so true, actually. I feel like I do that with shoes a lot, where I'm, like, weirdly self-conscious about how big my feet actually are. But oh, yeah. I'm like, um. A seven and a half, eight, and then Nine. they never fit, so I'm like, <laughs> can I just get, like, the eight and a half, and then I'm like, oh, sorry, like, let me just try. Recently, honestly, as we've gotten older, I've just started asking for the nine, because I'm like, mm -hmm. realistically, this is the size that is going to be the most comfortable for the longest amount of time. Look, I'm just going to save everybody a bit of time. I'll just, <laughs> yeah. Can you give me a nine? <laughs> like, I'll leave in uncomfortable <laughs> shoes to not have to ask for the nine. <laughs> like, what was wrong with me? Yeah, that's yeah, something else. Then. See, guys, the guys love to to brag about big feet. You know, you wouldn't even believe how big my feet are. Oh, <laughs> well, you know what like, they say about it, guys. Waist size. Which is his waist size or his feet? <laughs> <laughs> if my waist size had anything to do with anything, I would be exceeding expectations. <laughs> Exceeding expectations. <laughs> yeah, I went proper on you. Where are the expectations? <laughs> it's so sad. You know, it makes me think of this Jeff Foxworthy, you know, the redneck guy. He might be a redneck if. I feel like you're telling a lot of other people's jokes today. I am, but I'm giving them all credit. It's a comedy podcast. We, we, we make reference to comedians. I hope people appreciate the references. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It makes me think of these jokes. I feel like that's that's what I'm, I'm meant to do yes. when I think of it. <laughs> I never do anybody else's jokes if it's not, like, uh... Well, never, like, on stage, that's for sure. Anyways, you ruined the joke, man. All these... Because <laughs> he said... It's literally, like, what you said. I didn't mean to send you into a spiral like, there. It, yeah, I just went... I, exactly, I spiraled out, man. No, it's, like, exactly what you said, though, because he's his joke, he's like, well, you know what they say about a guy with big feet... Uh, and he's got big hands and a big nose. And he's like, well, he better be packing because that's a funny looking guy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that big clown ass motherfucker. <laughs> All right. So did we even watch the button we, video? No, we haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even watch the button video. We've watched you <laughs> unravel. We watched <laughs> six <laughs> seconds of it and me fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> The quickest, easiest way to add or reduce inches on the waistband of your pants. Watch, these jeans just won't close. Simply pop on the perfect fit button and attach the specially designed secure lock fastener. And look, your jeans close easily, fit perfectly, and hold extra tight. They make that look way too easy. There's well, no way you're just, first off, you gotta know how to like sew. If you don't know how to sew, how are you even gonna do this? Okay, did you just miss the first... <laughs> Do they? they 24 don't seconds? <laughs> I guess. Holy fuck. I was looking at it kind of, but also it was distracting because my phone just fell on the floor. No one will ever do they don't sew? Look. Rewind no that back sewing. a little bit. <laughs> this is a sewless. Stop. You need the perfect fit button. The quickest, easiest way Clips. to add or reduce inches so on it's the like waistband a of pants. Watch. Like an earring. So oh, so you just... Okay. Like a poppy pin or well, something. Yeah. Oh, well. they, they will demonstrate. <laughs> Just won't close. I missed that very crucial part. See? It's like a the pin. And then you stick the thing at the and back. Look, you... Now I'm on board. Right. Now I'm on board. See? I want... This is the most useful one that I've seen. Oh, really? Yeah. This is... <laughs> See? Right? They get you. Smart. Where you're like, I didn't yeah. know I needed this, but now I fucking do. Yeah. Your jeans close easily. 
fit perfectly and hold extra tight. No one will ever know you're wearing. Nobody will ever know. Nobody will ever Just attach know. the fastener onto the pin to hold firmly in place. Simply squeeze the fastener to remove. So when you simple. lose weight, just remove the perfect fit button. As you lose more weight, simply pop it on the other side. Wow, right? you've lost three inches on your waistline and your pants still fit perfectly. Let Perfect Fit tailor your best suit. Just slip on your belt and it's totally invisible. I ran out of jokes. I'm just captivated right? by the fucking video. I was literally now. just thinking that. I'm like, ah, see, they're on board because no one's saying anything. I'm they're just watching. like, I understand the value of this product. I'm so <laughs> I'm freaking right? sold, man. Everybody here I love wants one. infomercials. <laughs> All right, so yeah, yeah, we should get the <gasps> get them to advertise for us. Sponsor. They could be our sponsor. We could yes. we could release like our faces on buttons or, or something. A no offense, a button. We could literally do our own infomercial button. for Perfect Button. Get them to send one here. Send that us some buttons. That would be so great. I would be the perfect model. <laughs> we both would be be fantastic because perfect fit button is for everyone it's for all people of all shapes and sizes and yeah. if you lose weight or gain weight okay last one time flies i think uh all right last we got one. one more yep so this one here is i think by far the best oh my god <laughs> this is like the vajazzling industry so this here. is to jazzle to jazzle what is the ta? put some bling in your fling <laughs> <laughs> Disturbing, yes. Why to jazz? What is the tie? So listen, testicles. This one, I, I first I saw the picture and I was like, okay, so there's literally, it's like I was thinking it was gonna be a vajazzle situation where it's like you put little crystals on your badge and like that's appealing. Um, what just happened? I didn't touch anything. I'm sitting here. What? <laughs> we just got ghosted. That's you know? disturbing. Um, what the fuck? I wasn't even going to play that video, and that's a conspiracy video. Yeah, I know. I was like. That <gasps> I just said. Yeah. I wasn't that even going to play it. That That was supposed to. would have. They're listening. Yeah. Going over time. yeah. <laughs> we got to see yeah. this now. It's happening. All right. Okay. So for this to jazz all, it is a three-step personal confidence solution. That's how they describe it. So first, step one. I think you got a lot of confidence things going on if you're about to. <laughs> anyway. Listen. Honestly, though, by the end of it, I was kind of like, huh. So step one is a scented powder for your most intimate areas. Okay. It keeps everything dry, has a nice smell. And they're non-specific about the type of genitalia intimate I believe area. it's for vaginas but uh, okay. I think you probably could use it honestly. So maybe they're using tadjazzle because I guess vajazzle was taken. They're like, all right, well, we'll yeah, be... Yeah, probably, you're right. Like the next one, though, Hollywood. is pretty wild. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I remember now. To Jazzle, I think it's because it also has something to do with how you taste. Oh, okay. So, so there is a flavor the cream. Further getting on board, I guess. Right. <laughs> and then step three is crystal tattoos for your vagina. The in like The video for this one is obviously... Is incredible. Crystal tattoo. I'm picturing like what would be the equivalent of getting like a prison tattoo, but it's like a bunch of gypsies and hippies <laughs> fucking poking <laughs> you with their fucking little uh, yeah, their little like fucking a quill, gems. like a quill like... and a gem. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, so they're just little stickers, I believe, that you put on to feel okay. like you've got a little secret. stickers. Yeah, nothing I like more than eating plastic while I'm. Uh, okay, let's go pull this video. Yeah, this one uh, is pretty solid, honestly. Like, I don't know, all the videos kind of start off ridiculous and then... Wow, and this was sold. 14 minutes long. Right, so we don't have and, to uh, uh, watch the entire years. thing, but uh, I think that you can probably figure it out in the first little bit. Oh, so you could like put it anywhere. She's got on her buttocks, on her cheek, butt cheek. I feel like we need to turn it up, though, right? Oh, uh, yeah, probably a good idea. I was distracted by the visual images. Oh, that's like, won't go any. I mean, it's like as loud as it can go. Oh. Why is this video so quiet? Really I don't know. A lot of them anything. are quiet, I noticed. They don't even care about their sales. Like, I think she just said vajazzle, but maybe she didn't no, say No, she said to jazzle, for yeah. sure. I to Oh, yeah. 
the secret to to Jazzle? And why does it give you so much confidence? So much so confidence, because she knows she has like a little secret, right? I just that's secret. that's what they go with for sure. But today, so you can see how to Jazzle. It's oh right, this girl again. here is who describes it though. She smell good, taste good, look good, and feel fantastic. Hey. The makes me feel so good about myself and gives me unlimited confidence. It keeps <laughs> me fresh. I feel like it's like the same thing, just like over a few times over. Well, wow. yeah. Fifteen minutes of that, so they probably that's probably one of the infomercials that's like a comes on like a show like an episode so after a thing and it literally just runs for 20 minutes long <laughs> and then you you keep on watching it for some reason yeah well they suck you in like they go through the, they you know the three steps and um you think like who do you think's buying it guys for their girls girls for their guys girls for themselves you think any guys are out there like i honestly don't know if anyone's buying game. this i think they're really <laughs> trying to market to yeah. girls but I don't know. It's like, I don't believe any of these girls when they're talking about it. It's like, I don't Not feel either. like any of them actually have tried this Not product. Really selling it, like, no. they're embarrassed to be there. Like, they got to hire the team from Perfect Button and to like, make their, their video. Yes, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> if that Perfect Button team were making this, they would have had me, you know? Yeah, we'd all be to Jazlyn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's um, a three step confidence system that uh makes you smell good makes taste smell good, good and look good because jewels in places you wouldn't expect is fucking little uzi vert a uh, goddamn diamond in his forehead oh my god <laughs> what do you think of uh what do you think of this video what would you do like how what would you do about this have okay, you seen this i have not so there's a guy in a bed. Yeah, there's a guy laying in a bed. He's just laying in a bed. He's sleeping. And, uh, well, here we, here you go. It's real short. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> That's disgusting. And somebody just walks up to him real slow and, like, slips a, slips an egg in his mouth while his mouth is kind of open while he's sleeping. Just an egg yolk, and he yeah, just locks it back up. horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine that sneaking up on you, like so. This is like another like trending thing right now. There's a lot of different videos, but I think this is like the OG video of somebody doing this, like the Ew. one that started the trend. Just he's the yolk goes in. He coughs. Ew. <laughs> Just looking at his face and how I gotta pause it on. Like <laughs> <laughs> that is a vicious scream. Actually, <laughs> playing it back and hearing it was like. <laughs> <laughs> He's like fully venting a demon. It's so true. <laughs> like, what okay. did you do to me? Yeah, one second. I gotta pull up something else here. Uh, when you when you switch. Nice. Uh, okay. Oh my god. So yeah, we're, we're we're wrapping up here. I think we're pretty much at the end. Wait, of hang on. I did we need to see you... what that conspiracy thing was? Yeah, I know. That's what I was gonna say. I think I'll play. I just wanted to see because I did have some other uh, notes <laughs> for for this. Uh, oh my god. I wonder if you just read that. As if you did, that's funny. If not, we'll see it next show. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll look at the conspiracy. I have something that I've been wanting to show since like a couple episodes ago, and it just hasn't come around. Uh, we'll do it next time, I guess, and I'm going to show this conspiracy video because it is clearly needs to be told. This is information that's trying to get out there. Uh, I think it's it beside to Jazzle. Right, it? yeah, because it was, yeah, the Statue of Liberty. So this was the Statue of Liberty conspiracy video that just played automatically on our video feed, even though <laughs> we didn't ask it to. And it we are listening. Out. If you watch the video, you can see that my hands are clearly out of the reach of the computer, and there's no way that I could have touched the computer. <laughs> Wait. Do the analytics. So there's no way that this video could have came out. So this is the video that, uh, this is it. This is the... Uh, this is what they want us to see. Mm -hmm. The Statue of Liberty Secret Symbols, Part 15. Somebody's made 15 part parts to 15? this video. This is the important part. They're talking about numerology, and this sh <laughs> it just gets me going. Okay. I don't even... 51 feet and one inch. So it's just, just to be clear, it's just like a documentary take type video of this guy um, talking about the Statue of Liberty and all these like math things about the Statue of Liberty and how it's like significant and important. 
<laughs> okay. Now, whenever you see a number like this, because it's 151 feet tall, point one. One extra inch, it's clearly some kind of a clue or a cube. Why would they do that? So, 151 feet is actually 1,812 inches. You're going to add the extra inch. For First of all, saying 151.1, assuming that you're using a base of 10, that actually wouldn't even be one inch, just saying. I mean, inches are in base of 12, but uh, I don't know by calling it point one, I don't think that's actually right. Anyway, either way, lots of things wrong with this video. For the total number <laughs> of inches, you get 1,813 inches. Not every number is divisible by seven, okay? Because we know that seven has a theme here. 1,813 is divisible by seven. The answer is 259. Two plus five plus nine is 16. One plus six is seven again. <laughs> Without that extra inch, and this is what you have to understand here, because this is a remarkable situation. Without the extra inch, the number is not... Literally just, so 2 plus 5 plus 9 is 16. Yeah, what? The thing is, if you take 16, I mean, that's a 1 and a 6, and a 1 and a 6, yeah, those together. 7. Like, that's so fucking... Okay. <laughs> and that's like the fifth derivation. He started up... Holy He's fuck. not even done yet. Where, what, is, what is he... I do want to kind of see where it's going, yeah. I'll be honest. Divisible by 7, and it does not break down to 7. So we wonder if there is a reason for that. And if you know about number symbolism, you know that number seven is held as one of the most sacred. One plus that was six. It. Is actually All of that was to get this to seven. So add the extra inch for the total 151 feet is actually 1,812 inches. You're going to add the extra inch for the total the amount of inches. Inch. You get 1,813 inches. Not every number is divisible by seven. <laughs> okay, because we know that seven has a theme here. 1,813 is divisible by 7. The answer is 259. 2 plus, plus 5, five plus, plus 9 is 16. <laughs> 1 plus 6 is I think is that's seven also again. my bare blood. 2 plus... Without that... You could literally make that, like, yeah, you could do that out of anything. It's so funny. Yeah, what? Like, uh, that was... The numbers. I think, like, that actually hurt my brain a little bit. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> oh, okay. It hurts in so many ways because it just doesn't make sense. One, okay, 111, 111. I'm going to show one more thing because I want to, uh, this thing had me going as well. Where is it? Uh, yes. There we go. I'm glad that didn't take forever to find. All right. This is it. Guy almost eats a, this is not, a, this is just the last clip of the yoke. Guy almost eats a raw egg while he's sleeping meme. Okay, that's what it's called. Anyway. Okay, but I was like, are we... Are we watching this no. again? <laughs> no. This thing. So, I mean, I'm just, you know, going through Amazon and buying Legos and stuff and having a look around. And then I came across this Lego set. Do you see what set this is? This is a Harry Potter Lego set. It's called Lego Harry Potter Land, the Goblet of Fire. So this is the fourth movie, the fourth book. Rise of Voldemort building kit. This is in the fourth Harry Potter movie when Cedric Diggory spoiler alert gets fucking murdered by Voldemort and then Harry gets chained up with magic to Voldemort's dead father's grave and it's just like a Lego set who's buying this Lego set and what parents are like what kid is like I really want the scene uh, with, uh, <laughs> Yeah. I really want the the rise of Voldemort scene. I think oh that would be a great scene. This is literally just to like weed out the sociopaths and it's children. It's got 3,264 ratings and it's five stars. Like, This also could be just for parents who don't have any idea what their kids are into. So they're just like, ah, it says Harry Potter. Get them this one. Just get them. But, <laughs> and then they don't realize the turmoil they're putting. Like, this is like one of the most darkest scenes. Yeah, that is pretty dark series. for it. Why yeah. is it a Lego series? First of all, why is it a set? Only Slytherins are buying this. That's the dirty Only Slytherins. Only Slytherins. Do we That's talk about this all already? all 3,000. I don't think so. I'm a huge Harry Potter. I could go all day on Harry Potter, but... But, like, have you ever taken, like, a sorting hat? Yeah, I'm place? a Gryffindor through and through. Yeah. If you are? Getting at, yeah. I feel like I'd make a good Ravenclaw, too, but I'm... Yeah. When I've done the test, I was a Gryffindor. You want to know what I was? Were you a Slytherin? You scream queen-ass Slytherin? You, too? You are yes. a Slytherin? Yes, Would you because we're go-getters. <laughs> yeah. We're goal-oriented. We're hard-working. 
if you're a fan of uh, Voldemort, I guess this would be for you then. Look, you're hardworking. I mean, Slytherins. He they was did a have pretty some successful guy. Some cool I mean, traits. Pretty successful guy. Like, <laughs> he had a lot of ambition. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Hitler of the Harry Potter world, though. He's just like, <laughs> and he's got all those hooded followers and stuff, and they come through with the masks. It's scary shit, man. <laughs> just the yeah. This set though, the rise of Voldemort, and. I mean, just there's so many creepy things about that yeah. set. The fact that he's on the grave, he just murdered Diggory, Voldemort just came to life, he's about to kill Harry. Yeah, for Christmas, uh, the Rise of Voldemort set looks pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> like, he cuts off Wormtail's hand, he fucking boils it in the pot, he does all this crazy stuff, and, and Harry ends up saving himself with the Prior and Catantum, and that shit goes together. Their wands, uh... Sounds kind of guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does this make me <laughs> yeah uh what like, the yeah, answer anyway. is yes so this is the kid the psychopath that they got playing with it he looks upset by it doesn't he he's like this is my parents like, got me the set with oh, all the fucking slytherin and these dark so figures like, yeah. and it's Incredible. a real set i like to see it'd be cool if they had that real live action magic yeah, see, there's Harry bound by magic, and what he's standing on is the bones of his father's grave. Because these were all things that Voldemort needed to, like, make, uh, to come back to life, basically, through his horcrux and all that. Right. So, yeah, I mean, if you're a Harry Potter fan, definitely hit us up. I could go all day on Harry Potter. Send us in some Harry Potter stuff. Maybe I'll show some clips on one of the next videos. Always something to look forward to, because I have recently uh, found a channel that I am in love with. It's called Harry Potter Stan, or like Harry Potter dot Stan, I think. I don't know why Stan. I suppose his name is Stan. Okay. But it's like all this behind-the-scenes footage from, like, the whole Harry Potter series, like from all the movies, like the stuff that was coming out, the stuff that somebody would have just been filming while they were filming. Really incredibly oh, cool, cool to see it from the back end. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to look forward to that. Like Maybe to I'll, I'll search some. <laughs> 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 Only when I'm in my sauna pants. Yeah? Yeah, you want to see that sweatiness. Nothing oh, even. could you use the perfect fit button with the sauna pants, though? With the sauna pants? <clears throat> I would need to because there's no way those sauna pants are one size fits all. Stan? Stan? What's that? A reference to Eminem in the song. Oh, I was thinking perhaps Harry Potter Stan, but I don't know if that's what this Harry Potter person means. You think yeah. so? Yeah, because... Uh, Ends up driving... Like, I know it's I know who Stan is in, uh, like, in terms of Eminem and everything, but I don't know why that would have anything to do with this Harry yeah, Potter channel. Oh, oh, Harry Potter Stan. That's like, uh, not very fan. insightful. Oh, my yeah, okay. God. Yeah, okay, so the terms are very obsessed celebrity. Interesting. Okay, now I got you. I didn't make it all the way to the Whoa. bottom. That's, where, that's very <laughs> insightful. So the idea is that, that Harry is. Potter Stan, because the Stan in Eminem was the fan. Who was super Who was obsessed. so obsessed with them, right? And then he, like, says that he killed himself. He drove himself off a bridge because he wouldn't even send a half of my little nephew, Matthew, right? <laughs> exactly. And he just wouldn't. Uh, and then he got mad. He kills himself. And then Eminem finds the tape and uh, in, in the cassette deck, right? I recently bought an old Marshall Mathers LP. I was cool, uh, excited to find that as the stores uh, opened up again. Uh, or, no, sorry, it was a Slim Shady LP, I think. Uh, I'd have to get it. But yeah, when the record stores were back open, I popped in there after getting my hair cut. I got my hair cut. I feel like it would not be a fair episode. We didn't address Jackie's wonderful new hair. Uh -huh. Do you guys love it or what? <laughs> we didn't address my haircut, but that's not. that doesn't matter. This is, <laughs> this is a <laughs> noteworthy address. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, salons were open <laughs> for about four weeks. So Yeah, we got to sleep got in, in those windows. Just under the fucking wire. That's it. You get... Know. They don't know. Yeah, you got to get in there when you can. Go and get your fucking records. Hit up your local shop. Do all the cool stuff that you can. And uh, we together can prevent the rise of Voldemort. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it, everybody. All right. Good night. This was the, well, episode you, seven. You, not the St. Patrick's episode, but, you know, it, it is for us. And episode seven. That's right. That's more accurate. Can we just hear the one, the guy again, one more time? The fucking serious or whatever yeah. the hell. Yeah, yeah, I would love I'm to do joking. that. I'm not joking. I'm know. fucking serious, man. I'm not joking. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Dealing absolutes. All absolutes, mate.
What, Chris, why are you laughing for? Chris, why are you laughing I'm being serious. I'm being serious. <laughs> no, you see, no, you see, I'm talking facts here. I don't do if, buts, and maybes. I do <laughs> absolute. Do you, know do you know what I'm trying to say? Oh, yeah, incredible. What, Chris, why are you laughing for? Why are you laughing for? I'm being serious. I'm being serious. <laughs> no, you see, no, you see, I'm talking facts here. I don't do if, buts, and maybes. I do absolute. Do you know what I'm trying to say? This guy's really fucking, like, laying it into this guy who's there. Like, he is... He's he looking wants for to be taken scrap. seriously. He really does. There's probably, man, a few years ago on a St. Patrick's Day like this, there would have been tons of those kids downtown routing in the market just looking for silly fights and shit. And I tell you what, they are not half as serious as this kid. Yeah. <laughs> this kid. No ifs, ands, buts, and maybes. Uh, and that's the end of the episode, man. No ifs, ands, buts, and maybes. I'm fucking serious. Only man. absolutes. Only absolutes. That's the end. It's the end. <laughs> the end. Absolutely. <laughs> the end. I won't say it again. <laughs> I really, really want you to cut it out just in the, after you say just the end. Done. <laughs> the end. You don't want me to include the last five the ends? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would never want to stifle your creative <laughs> voice. Uh, the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. That's it. I'm done. Oh, that's great. <laughs>